If you're looking for a resin printer that can print big, or maybe pump out dozens of models in one go, the Frozen Transform might be for you. The resin 3D printer market has become saturated, with offerings from all the major 3D printer players and some obscure ones too. Most of them are pretty similar. They have a 2K screen that's roughly 120 by 68 millimeters, a touchscreen interface and compatibility with Qi2 Box. Most of them seem to print pretty well, but I'm looking for something different. So I'm happy to say that this review and the next resin printer I cover are definitely that. We start with this Frozen Transform and it's enormous, really well built and capable of really large prints. This one was provided free of charge by 3D Printers Online, an Australian website that covers the whole Frozen range as well as some other popular brands of 3D printers. In this review, we're going to look at a range of test prints, both big and small, to try and work out the strengths and weaknesses of this machine. We'll start by looking at the price and specs. The Frozen Transform is a large mast SLA printer with a 13.3 inch 4K display. This one was provided by 3D Printers Online and this price is in Australian dollars. It boasts tremendous print quality with some other interesting features as well, such as the changeable panels. We can switch out the single 13.3 inch display for two 5.5 inch displays instead. It also offers wireless printing and very importantly, on a printer of this size, it has a parallel optical engine. Basically, that means instead of one LED in the center, we have a large array underneath to spread the light evenly. If you're outside of Australia, you can get this printer directly from the Frozen website and it retails for just under US $2,000. It's also worth noting that unlike a lot of other manufacturers, you can buy all of the spare parts you need to keep your printer running into the future. Also on the website are a range of PDF manuals as well as software downloads and technical documents. This printer was extremely well packaged with a lot of foam padding and the whole thing wrapped many times in some sort of glad wrap to keep the dust out. There was also a second box with the usual gloves, resin, scrapers and filters. In here was also the build plate. The only thing that needed assembly was the two handles for the doors and that was a matter of two bolts for each, tied in and you're done. The SD card goes into the back as well as a Wi-Fi dongle and then the machine can be powered up. It takes a few minutes on first boot because it's installing the system on the orange Pi inside. But after that, you're greeted by a clear and attractive menu. Installing the build platform is done by loosening the two thumb screws, sliding it into place and then tightening them. And leveling is on like most resin printers where you loosen off four screws Use the assisted menu to lower the Z-axis the whole way down until the bed is inside the vat and then simply retighten the four screws around the build platform. I always recommend doing an LCD test before you pour in any resin as this will verify that everything is working correctly with the screen. Connecting Wi-Fi is a piece of cake with a full on-screen keyboard. You'll get a success message and it will tell you the IP address on the main screen. There's also a nice menu where it will tell you how your SD storage is going as well as temperatures of the machine. Frozen has its own slicer called PZ Slice, but for the most part, I use the much more popular Qi2 box. After you've sliced from the inbuilt resin profiles, you save a zip file to your computer and then head to the web interface to select it and then click upload. A few seconds later, the screen will reload and your plate will be there. Qi2 box with a black and white 2D preview and PZ Slice with a 3D picture. Mid print, the LCD screen matches the web interface, giving you the same information and layer preview. It was exciting to track the progress of the longest resin 3D prints that I've ever done. The perforated build platform is very flat and the holes actually make it easier to get the corner of the spatula inside to begin prying them off. Overall, this is an easy printer to use. So yes, a lot of money, but also a lot of printer but I don't think this is aimed at your average hobbyist. Instead, I see this aimed at people who like to do really large props and models, or people who want to do production runs, printing a whole bunch of things in one plate to make it quick and efficient. Large prints and small prints were my focus for this review, but also some prints in between in size for good measure. All of mine were done in the ABS-like frozen resin at 0.05 millimeter layer height, and were primarily sliced on Qi2 box. You might notice a couple of things about my prints. 
The really big ones have some spots where they haven't been washed properly, and that's because they were too big to fit into my current washing station. The other thing you'll see are some specks of dirt, and that's because I queued a lot of these outside, and you might have heard there's been pretty crazy weather lately in Australia, so the wind has blown on some dirt and debris. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the close-ups, and remember that it's not the printer's fault. My first test print is one normally done on FDM printers, and it's this all-in-one mini print test. There's no issues here that I can see, and it really shows off what resin printers can do compared to FDM. Next up, I printed two versions of this Spiral Braid Galaxy. And I can't lie, it did amuse me to print something so small on a printer so large. I'm glad to say that it passed this test, and was able to produce all of the fine details without issue. I took the same SEL and I scaled it up much larger, and this gave me my first failure, but of course it was my fault because I didn't have enough resin in the vat. I probably should have hollowed this model out and paid a little bit more attention while it was printing, but for what it's worth, it looked pretty promising for what was printed before it ran out of resin. Next up was my first experiment in printing a full plate of parts in one go, and I chose this Wear Tiger miniature. Now, unfortunately, I did have the wrong resin profile for this, so these prints are a little bit overcured, and it resulted in some of them failing. In these situations, it's absolutely imperative that you retrieve the failed pieces from the vat, otherwise your next print will fail for sure. Considering my blunder, they still turned out pretty good, and there's some really nice details on the texture on the back, as well as the mane around the face. Next up, I printed a range of busts. I figured that would be indicative of the type of thing that would attract people to this printer. This Star Wars Tusken Raider is from my mini factory, and all I did was hollow it out before I hit go. I was running low on the beige resin, pouring in some matte grey partway through, which explains the colour change. The final result for this one is quite impressive too. The fine texture of the cloak is produced with a lot of detail, and although not as big as what's to come, it's still too big to fit in the average budget resin printer. The next one is probably my favourite, and it's a supportless Deadpool bust. This is the type of print that makes the average person say wow. You have to look really close before you find any blemishes, and it would provide a fantastic basis for someone to do some very minor sanding, filling, and then painting to put on display. Now this next one is of particular significance for me, and that's because it's a charity item. In January, I was fortunate enough to be a guest on a live stream for the 1440 Makers Project. Through the sale of these models on Gumroad, they were able to raise a considerable amount of money to combat the devastation of the bushfires in Australia. I chose this model because it was the tallest of those available and I was able to scale it up to show the enormous print volume of this printer. But keep in mind, this is still only around 300 millimeters and it goes the whole way up to 400 millimeters at max capacity. This is another quality print that I would consider almost flawless. The smooth surfaces are smooth and the fine textured surfaces are very detailed. If you like 3D printing and you'd like to use it to support the victims of the bushfires in Australia, please head to the link in the description below and consider buying a model from Gumroad. At this point, I decided to return to the concept of doing a full plate in one go, loading up 28 of these Pantera rings. This time with the correct resin profile, the results were a lot more successful and 26 out of the 28 successfully completed. I'm willing to put the two failed ones down to tiny pieces of resin floating in the vat that prevented those first layers from sticking properly. All 26 of these, I would say, turned out identical. And that's important because on a printer this big, you can't have a single LED source in the middle. You need to have them the whole way along. Otherwise, the areas in the middle of the vat will cure very differently to those on the outside. Fortunately, on this printer, it has a para LED array. You can see it through the side during curing. And based on these prints, it seems to do a tremendous job of spreading the light evenly. Once again, I can't really find any flaws with these rings. The combination of the frozen transform and the frozen resin means there's no warping, small details are preserved, and smooth surfaces are just that. I would think this printer doing this type of print would be a really attractive option for people who are doing large runs of investment cast jewelry. Finally, I finished up with more small prints. This lattice torture test proved no match for this printer. What would be very difficult on an FDM machine is almost guaranteed success on a resin printer. The next one down was this Moon City model. It looks kind of chunky from the outside, but when you turn it around, you can see all of the fine details on the buildings inside have come out flawlessly. We needed to go smaller, so with another miniature, I did just that. While it was curing outside, this one unfortunately met up with my puppies, who snapped off a wing and damaged the base, 
I've restored the wing with a bit of super glue and I'm more than happy with the detail that's been achieved. Trying to push the limits even further, I took the popular Eiffel Tower model and I scaled it down to 40 millimeters tall. Finally, we seem to meet the limits of this printer. You're looking at the pieces here because this one was also discovered by my puppies. But even before that, some of the segments had broken away, despite other features being extremely small and printing correctly. So that's the end of my test prints. So what are my thoughts? Well, we'll summarize with some pros and cons. And we'll start with the hardware. This thing is enormous, robust, and it feels bulletproof. It's got a ball screw and twin linear rails for the Z axis. The outer case is heavy duty powder coated steel and the two front hinging doors latch close on the magnets in a very satisfying way. That build quality continues on the inside with the para LED array, providing a very uniform distribution of light the whole way across the vat. For me as a user negotiating this thing, I found it very user friendly. The touchscreen on the front is large and easy to use and that Wi-Fi functionality from the Orange Pi inside was something I used on almost every print and it was really handy to be able to check the progress from a device anywhere in the house. Right now it's sitting here powered on and you can't hear anything at all. And that's because the cooling fans for the LEDs only come on during printing. So it's nice to be able to have it sitting there, not making any noise in between prints. We have a choice of three slices with PZ Slice, Tutu Box, and a frozen branded version of Formware. For each of those, we also have inbuilt resin profiles that you can edit if you want to tweak the settings. One nice thing about this machine is that there's a large range of resins from Frozen. That includes flexible, casting, and tougher engineering variants, but it's also compatible with any third-party resins you might have that cure at this wavelength. I had a couple of failed prints. I would chalk both of those down to problems that I introduced. I think my testing shows that you can print pretty big things quite reliably. I think my testing also showed that you can print smaller items with sufficient detail. And if you're looking to justify the price of this machine, you could print dozens at a time with a very high success rate. Like any machine, there are some cons that you need to be aware with. Now that Orange Pi is really convenient for connecting to Wi-Fi and having that excellent online interface, but like a Raspberry Pi, you really need to shut it down from the menu on the front of the printer instead of just turning the power off. At one stage, I accidentally unplugged the printer mid-print and I happened to corrupt the installation. Fortunately, this was a really easy fix. I went to the Frozen website, downloaded the image, flashed it to the SD card, put it in the printer, powered up, and it was back working the way it should have been. Let's talk about the screen. It's really large at 13.3 inches and it's really welcome that it's 4K. If you were to scale up a 2K display to this size, you'd find the pixels were quite big and the results wouldn't be that great. But even at 4K, the effective pixels per inch is still a little bit less than you'll get from a typical smaller 2K screen. If you were only looking to do very small and finely detailed prints, you'd probably be better off with a typical 2K model, or if you want the absolute best in resolution, something like a Shuffle 4K. Like any resin printer, this 4K screen will be a consumable, eventually it will need replacing. Sean from 3D Printers Online says he's able to supply them to his customers. And Frozen, for their other resin printers, stock consumables on their store, and I would expect them to do the same for this in time. One other thing about a resin printer this big is the equipment that you need needs to be scaled up to fit in the prints. So keep in mind that you might have additional costs from upgrading your cleaning and curing setups to cope with the larger model size. You can't avoid the fact that this is an expensive printer, but like I said at the start, it's not aimed at the average hobbyists. Its direct competitor is the Phenom from Piopoli, and that seems very comparable in terms of size, specs, and price. My final thoughts. While not for everyone, if you are in the market for a big printer to make big things or lots of little things in one go, I think this will be a reliable and solid performer. What's coming up in terms of resin prints? Well, I talked about another review coming up that's different, and that's the little brother of this thing here. The Frozen Sonic and Frozen Sonic Mini are unique in that they have a monochrome long life LCD and that means they can cure layers in around two seconds instead of the typical eight or nine. So that means resin prints won't take so long to finish and I'm really excited to have just started testing that model. If you've got any thoughts about that or anything you've seen on this printer, please leave them down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy resin printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. 
See you next time.